A summary of the news now on BBC One with Moira Stewart. Good morning. The government will unveil plans today to cap the budget for legal aid. People taking action may have to pay towards the cost if they lose. The Lord Chancellor, Lord Mackay, says he wants to focus on cases that really deserve to go forward. Debbie Headley is a single parent with a four-year-old daughter, Misha. Two years ago, her employer said she'd have to work in the evenings instead of during the day. With a young child to care for, she had to refuse and lost her job. She was given legal aid to help prepare her case for unfair dismissal and was awarded compensation. Under the government's plans, anyone who qualifies for aid may in future have to pay a one-off application fee, and if they lose their case, they'll have to pay the winner's legal costs from their own money. That's something that worries pressure groups campaigning for more access to justice. What the government is prospectively doing here is digging further and further into the poverty trap which currently affects legal aid litigants. People are just too poor and levels of eligibility just too low to expect them to make the kind of payments that I fear are going to be required from this white paper. Those like Debbie Headley might lose out in future, but the government believes its proposals will make sure only the most deserving cases get to court. Performance tables for hospitals in England, Wales and Northern Ireland are being published later today and they're expected to show that patients are being, are being seen more quickly than in previous years. But critics claim they don't measure the quality of patient care. The tables measure things like the percentage of patients waiting more than 13 weeks for an outpatient's appointment or an operation. Separate documents cover the performance of ambulance services and also for the first time vaccination and immunisation rates by GPs. While there's concern in England about the number of patients whose operations were cancelled and who were not seen within a month, it's understood more hospitals are reaching the government's targets. However, critics claim the tables only show how well a hospital can work the system rather than measure the quality of its care. That's all right. That's normal. The health department is reviewing its rule that all patients must be assessed within five minutes of arriving at casualty because of concern that staff were merely acknowledging a patient's arrival instead of providing treatment. Meanwhile, the Scottish office is to publish its hospital's results in the next few weeks. Its tables also include so-called death rates. Around 80,000 acres of land have been ravaged by bushfires in the western United States. Efforts to control the fires have been hampered by the heat wave. In California, thousands of people have been forced to evacuate their homes. Here, smoking among children has reached its highest level for 10 years. 60 organizations, including the British Medical Association and the National Consumer Council, have joined forces to launch a campaign aimed at persuading children not to take up the habit. Teachers up and down the country are hoping their schools will be visited by this new anti-smoking roadshow run by the charity Quit, which gives young people the facts about cigarettes. How many people do you think die in this country every day from smoking-related diseases? Not quite million. Yeah, it's actually 300 people. The fact is that if a group of young people continue to regularly smoke, at least half of them will die prematurely of a smoking-related disease. 15-year-old Vicky used to smoke 13 cigarettes a day, but with help, she's now cut down to just one. It can damage your health and damage the way you look and damage the way you act and things like that. The charity wants the government to spend £108 million to counteract what the tobacco industry spends on promotion, a figure they reckon the Treasury collects in tax from underage smokers buying cigarettes. More news at midday. Good morning, the Northern Ireland News. More than 60 jobs are being created in Londonderry thanks to an investment by an English foundry. Transtech Automotive already employs 180 people at its plant in Campsie. The investment follows an increase in demand from the Ford Motor Company for a new type of cylinder head. Police have identified a schoolboy from Belfast who drowned while on holiday in America. 13-year-old Paul Harmon from Dermore Avenue was swimming in Lake Ontario when he got into difficulties. The Irish government will announce plans later today for a crackdown on drug barons and gangland criminals. The coalition intends to recruit more Gardaí and increase prison capacity. A married couple and their three children escaped injury when shots were fired at their home in Newton Abbey in the early hours of this morning. 
Two shots were fired at the house in O'Neill Road. Damage was caused by pellets to the brickwork during the incident, which happened shortly after midnight. It's believed the attack wasn't sectarian. One of Belfast's veteran politicians and trade unionists is to receive an honorary degree from the University of Ulster. Paddy Devlin will receive a doctorate for his contribution to political life. That's it. Good afternoon. Good morning. Well, it may be a fairly calm spell of weather at the moment, but this is the sort of scene we could expect to see tonight for the southwest approaches and also the English Channel coast. Yes, there's a storm system out there in the Atlantic. Here it is on the chart. It's well out to the west at the moment, but it is working its way eastwards. Now, you can see the thicker cloud associated with that out towards the west. Elsewhere across mainland Britain, though, just shower cloud, giving one or two light showers here and there. There'll be more of those for the rest of the morning, becoming more widespread this afternoon, and some of them could be quite heavy, particularly on the eastern side. Out to the west, that cloud increasing, getting through to Northern Ireland this afternoon with some rain. Rain too, just about making it into the Irish Sea, and then more particularly this evening, getting into mainland Britain on the western side. Temperatures today varying from 13 degrees in the far northwest to 19 in the southeast, so not particularly warm, and those winds increasing all the time. More rain to come tonight, particularly on the eastern side of Britain. That's it from me.